Why do we choose horses to ride into the backcountry? That's a good question. I'm still trying to figure that one out. So we're just getting the horses ready. There's so much going on. Literally so many moving parts. So far, so good. Ah! What we've got tonight is a whole kg of couscous uh, mixed up with some uh, pre-cut uh, kumara. We've got your hazelnut block of chocolate, obviously that's ready to go as well. This looks like it's pesto, yep. We've got whole jars of pesto ready to go. A lot of um, calories in here, so we'll have that tonight and save the time that we've lost. The trip objective was to ski the Candlesticks, a beautiful range far off the back of a high country station. To our knowledge, no one had skied here before. We'd actually attempted 12 months earlier, but with little success. So top friend, great skier, and even better horseman, Derek Douglas Deans, had a way he thought might get us there. I'm someone who's excited hugely by exploring and I think we all look to discover new places in our lives and that is getting harder and harder as the years go on. So we decided to change up the approach and take five horses deep into the backcountry and see how the journey would differ from your usual trip and expedition. So the crew consisted of myself, Triple D, good friend Kenji and my sister Fee, as well as Poppy, Dallas, North, Chanel and Ski Horse. Often working with horses on the station, Derek understood their strengths and skills and he thought it was our best chance to reach the range. I'm Kenji, backcountry experience level 10, horse riding experience, zip. Uh, so the funny thing was is that I've been shit scared of horses for like 10 years probably and when Craig asked me, I kept it so quiet and I kind of thought he knew that I was scared of horses. It was like chaotically cold in the morning, I'm shit scared half the day. But it was cool, it was worth it. It's just different, it's a slower journey. You get all these trucks coming, flying around in helicopters and whatnot, and they just don't really get that same experience and don't really understand the scale of where you are and what's going on around you. So the sore ass and like thighs is kind of worth it in the end. So we parked up the horses with a fresh bit of hay to share between them and that's when the hard yards really started. What a waste of that. The realities of doing that mission for me was a massive check out from what day to day life begins to feel like. You'd go through all these trials and tribulations like waking up in the morning and having to deal with animals and freaking out and you know just my terrain maybe not working. The whole aspect of the unknown was so different to any typical trip that it just created this I don't know, like a hive mind where we all had to work so closely together and just make it work and it all worked and the vibes were so high. Finally in the candlesticks. Good weather, good crew.
it's a scary moment when everything's on. I'm You've good. worked towards it for six months to get in that position. You've ridden horses for two days to get there, slogged up a hill, slept in a cold tent, and you think something's gonna be in condition and you drop in and it's just ice. And you're genuinely scared for your safety. Holy shit. There's exposure below you, you've got to tap into all your skills to get yourself out of there safely. There's no getting around and it's pretty serious. Being that deep in the backcountry, it's just a good reminder that nature is boss. I've never figured out my perspective on it. I think it's a mix of a curious mindset as well as a really physical pursuit. And I think the harmony between them is somewhere where I find myself a lot of the time. A lot of people don't see it as harmony. I think it's a lot of hard work and a lot of cold mornings, a lot of frozen boots. And I like those uncomfortable times. I think that's kind of what shows your true colors. and. It's an amazing feeling when you do overcome those and you get to the ridge and the sun's beaming and you're there with your best friends and sharing a smile. It's just, it's just kind of those little things that, that make a trip like that. You know, there's, there's always a bigger aspect that the wider audience that it really signifies to them, but at the core of it for me, it's always been just the, the small little factors, you know, the small laughter, the small kind of the smiles, the, you know, those little details that you know that you're suffering so much putting your ski boots on in the morning, and then you just look over and there's Derek going through the same thing, and then you kind of catch each other's eye and just start laughing because you know this is a totally self-inflicted decision. Coming back down the valley to find happy horses was a relief to say the least and an incredible feeling because that's when we kind of realised the scale of what we'd pulled off. In Aotearoa, New Zealand, it's never sure what skiing you're going to find out there. Could be windy, could be white out, could be blow a pow, but I'm never going to be settled until I go out there and find out for myself. 